One of the great parts about using Infant Unify is you could do a lot more than just evening skin. And this is a great example of that. There are many times when I work on a photograph and I really, really wish I could match the exact shade of makeup to other elements in the photograph because tying those in together really makes a nice harmonious look to it. So for example, this particular image shot by Wayne Denny is such a great example of that because I'm going to show you the before file real quick. Um, and this is the before file. You can see the lipstick was intentionally red and the, the eyeshadow is intentionally red and copperish as well for obvious reasons. And it wasn't meant to be modified by the makeup artist. You always want to respect that, of course. But he gave this image for um, example purposes on what we could do with the panel. And I thought, you know what? Aside from just skin, I think the makeup is a good example for this. And I want to show you how this kind of works because I've shown you the before and after. I want to start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my layers here. And again, if you haven't even used Infinite Unify before or you're confused with all the settings and features, just head over to infinite-tools.com and go to Infinite Unify. And there's a video on the main page where it goes over all the settings and features. And also, there's an educational component at the bottom which shows you different use case scenarios, just like this other image, but in other examples. So go check that out. Okay, so now I have um, the Infinite Unify panel up and I have my layer here, my background layer. I'm going to go over to my lasso tool. I'm going to actually go and make a selection here. I'm going to select these nice copper tones over here like that. And I think what I'll do then is I'm just going to hit create. And what you'll notice is that automatically it selected these um, nice copper tones ranging from darks to lights. And I have my gradient map set to five points instead of three, just so that there's more variation going on. My smoothness, which is going to be the level of um, complexity, basically, and nuances that it selects. If I go over to the left hand side, you'll notice that there's a lot more variations in tones that, that it selects, which then it uses for the gradient map. So honestly, I think 50 is a pretty good range. It, it evens out and kind of removes the small, small nuances that might not be relevant and makes the selection really, really nice. And then I'm going to simply go and click on my mask, my black mask, and I'm not going to touch anything else. I have my blend mode here set to color. If you didn't do that, simply click on color. So it's set to color and I had my mask option here and nothing else selected. So if you didn't do that, simply just go back and redo it again. OK, now that I have that done, I'm going to click on my brush tool here. And my flow, I'll just keep somewhere like 5 or 10%. It doesn't really matter too much as long as it's something really minimal that you can kind of easily brush back in. My brush tool itself, my hardness is set to 0%. And now I simply just have to start painting. Um, oh, and the last thing, the opacity of the layer. If you want to, you can you know select 100%. And I think that should be fine because this is just makeup that we're talking about. Nothing very specific to skin. Should be pretty reliable. And since we're going to go for an exact match, I think 100% is, is appropriate for this scenario. Uh, if you see my other videos, you'll know that um, I bring my opacity down to about 40% or so. But this one, I'm going to bring it down to 100%. Now, my flow here, I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher because it's going a little bit slow, too slow for my liking. And I'm just going to go and start brushing like this. And you can see the red tones change to the copper tones, which is really, really nice. I love seeing that transition happening. And it looks really natural because the gradient map is doing such a fantastic job of knowing what color to use in the shadows and what colors to use in the midtones. I'm always amazed at how good it is. I would have taken forever to make those sample points manually and getting it right and figuring it out. But this has five different sample points. So it makes the steps really believable and very accurate, I would say. There we go. You can see now that the tones of the lip match perfectly with the copper highlights. And I think that's really, really cool. I could do the same thing here with the eyeshadow. Again, using a low flow because you don't want to bring it all at once. You kind of want to make your judgment as you're brushing it in. I think that looks really nice and believable. Again, I didn't even have to kind of worry about the eyelashes so much. Um, and if you want to, you can. But I thought that because the shadows in the gradient map 
as you can see here, or by clicking on the gradient map itself, you can see here is really dark. So the, the eyelashes being dark as they are, are not going to be as visible once you kind of paint over them. And you can mask it out if you want to as well. But for this example, I don't think it's as necessary. So there you go. Just like that, the eyeshadow and the lipstick now have a central point that matches the hair. Hmm, let's see what would happen if I even use this mask to kind of paint in some of these highlights here in the hair. And you can see here that the highlights are also changing. Oops, I don't want to do that and lose my work. No, thank you. You can see now that I'm adding like copper tones to the highlights. Honestly, this wasn't even in the script. This was kind of just off the cuff random, but I like it a lot. I like this a lot, actually. And it's cool because I didn't even have to like manually paint anything. I could just make a so you know, make that gradient map and kind of just go on and and add these nice like copper highlights everywhere. It's really nice. And it I don't even have to worry about the shadows because it kind of takes care of that for me too. Wow, okay. I think I've just impressed myself a little bit. There you go. The hair looks really it's hap it's popping. Okay. I could even kind of paint in the shirt if I want to. I'm like, you know what? I don't want that green. I want a nice copper shirt too. Well, I could do that. There we go. There we go. I think that looks that looks incredible, actually. And again, if you want to minimize that, just bring your opacity lower if you want to. Um, or not. It's up to you. But you get the idea. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. This was something that I was really excited about because I'm going to be using this for everything. You can even use this for beverages. In fact, we have a video about that on the site as well if you want to go check that out. And pretty much anything else. You can also do the eyes if you want to or sample the eye color to match the lipstick. You could see how the ideas just keep going further and further. Anyways, hope you all are having a fantastic day and I'm excited to see what you all do with this.